Good morning, Singapore. Welcome to Tuesday's edition of The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for this morning is the award-winning, the Oscar-winning, okay, not Oscar-winning, <laughs> but the award-winning therapist from the therapy room, Dr. Geraldine Tan. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning. It's always so dramatic every time you give an introduction. I know. Yeah, you, can, you can thank Glenn for that. We have nothing to do with it. <laughs> I should be a award-winning psychologist, Dr. Ger- Geraldine Tan. <laughs> but it is true, though. She is award-winning. And we're so lucky yeah. to have you here with us every Tuesday talking about things that need to be spoken about. Well, I enjoy my work. I hope everybody does. And, mm. and yeah. enjoy their work. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's very important, important that people enjoy uh, yeah. what they do. So for mm. anyone who's mm. tuned in to us right now, Jerry, who hates yes. going to work, do you have any advice for them before we go into today's topic? <laughs> That's such a difficult thing and you have to put me on the spot, right? But um, for the young ones choosing their careers, so for the teens, for those in poly, in JC, mm. you know, I always, always remind them, choose something that they know that they will enjoy. Not because someone tells them to choose that subject or choose that career or they feel compelled to do it or, oh, it earns me a lot of money, so therefore I go into it. Yeah, so don't choose it just because it earns you all the big bucks. Well, because you know what? Would that would mean all the kids will become TikTok stars and YouTube stars. Oh, oh no, that, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, but that'll earn them but big bucks. Because, yeah, <laughs> big, and no, I've, I've, walk, I've, I've heard lots of kids, like overheard kids talking, yeah. whether it's on the train or, you know, just walking down the street. They're like, what do you want to do? And they're, all they're talking about is like, I want to be a YouTube star. I want to be a TikTok, TikTok star. star. Yeah. You know, I want to learn earn yeah. money becoming an influencer. I mean, it is, as much as we don't like to admit it it is a profession mm. now but you know what's it interesting is. what comes to me out of that is the confidence these kids have to think that they can do it and succeed at it mm. yeah there's a lot of confidence in and these young people and then they just end up exposing themselves no i think oh. they're just being very mm. ignorant actually when you actually when you sit with them in session and you talk to them what is required for the whole setup, for uh, content creation, for video editing. Yeah. It's a lot of work, actually. So it all is. the background work they don't see, they only see the glitz and the glamour of it. Mm. And they yeah. see the number of likes. Mm. But they don't know the hard work that goes into it until we sit with them and talk to them about it. Then they go, oh, you mean it's so much effort? I said, yeah, it's a lot of hard work. You want to get right up there you need to know the hard work that goes behind that you know number of likes mm. i mean so that's, that's you know, yeah it, it, even for us we're like unboxing something or over something we're just yeah. like lazy we're like oh my gosh you know just leave it for another day kind of thing but all these influences they do go through a lot to create that content they do it's, they it's, do. it's, it's yeah. a whole setup yeah, but the ones the ones that stand out the most are the ones who are just exposing their boobs okay oh glenn that's not it. all, no, not no. all if of i them. were a woman that's it, no? <laughs> I would be exposing my boobs, my behind. You would have uh, your OnlyFans account as and well. And <laughs> then I'll have a bungalow. I'll be able to, uh, you know, buy like a Lamborghini. Oh, right. Okay. Well, yeah. well you, you might be able to. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, today we're talking about teens and self-esteem. And yes. you need a lot of self-esteem to create content as well. You do, you do. Yeah, but we're not talking about creating content. No. We're talking about a complaint that I've recently been hearing from parents and from teachers. Okay. <laughs> the okay. teens are still wearing their masks in school or outside. It's oh. quite interesting. Uh, okay. Are they getting shamed for wearing their masks? But, well, what's the problem if they're still wearing their masks? I don't see an issue with it. Because they're shy. They, they, you can't see their expression. Is that it? Is that the reason? There, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with wearing masks. And if you're sick, you wear your mask. Yeah. You know, if you're you're afraid of getting COVID another time, which some of us got two or three times, um, yes, wear your mask. But these teens, it's very interesting because I, I noticed um, even before um, all these complaints came in, I was saying, okay, when the mask uh, rules lifts, there is going to be a group of kids or going to be a group of people that will not take off the mask. 
And people are asking me, which group is it? I say the teen girls, especially your 12 to 15 year old or 16 year old girls that will not take off their mask or the um, boys that are not as sporty also within this age group that will not take off their mask. Yeah, if you think about it, it's like a masquerade ball. You can't see mm. the person's expressions. Mm. Mm-hmm. You feel a little bit mm. safer behind that. So, so mm. the, ma- the mask is a safety blanket? It is, it is. So many of the teens that I spoke with, right, and they come into session and they're scared. Oh my God, I still can only see your eyes. I still cannot see two thirds of your face. And they go, I look better with my mask. I said, Aww. who told you that? I don't know. I I just think I look better with uh, my mask on. I think know? because and they were given the option to wear it during COVID. If yes. COVID hadn't come along, yes. they, they wouldn't yes. they wouldn't be think, thinking that way, and people would see their whole face all the time and get used to mm-hmm. it. You know. Mm-hmm. But but mm-hmm. that comment of I think I look better with yeah. my mask on is worrying. It's true for some people. It, it, <laughs> Glenn. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. It, I I sometimes judge people. I see them wearing a mask. I don't know what they look like. I see their eyes and then I imagine the rest of their face. Yeah. And then but when, then they when take it out, comes off, I'm like, oh. I <laughs> no, I, I did not. I did not. I did not say disappointed. I meant, stop putting words in my mouth. Where are these? Where are these ping pong balls? <laughs> but it sounded like so disappointing. That's because oh. Glenn said it. No. What I meant to say was, I didn't imagine the rest of the face right. would look like that to match the eyes. That is so interesting because i used to do that See? at the height of the pandemic i don't do it yeah. anymore because i don't care yeah to me i don't care you're wearing a mask and you know you you you're worried about your safety i don't bother about what the person looks like but when it first started i was picturing all, all kinds of, of faces things under the mask. Underneath. and so can you imagine the teens though they're already going through so much uh, so many hormonal yes. changes yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. There is acne, there is crooked teeth, there are braces, yeah. you know, things yeah. like that. They yeah. can't figure out their makeup and stuff. So it must be tough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this is a stage that they are going through, you know, the 12 to 16 year olds, right? It, where we are interacting with people. We're trying to figure out ourselves. We're trying to figure out who we are, where we belong, our identity. In the midst of all the, what you mentioned, right? The hormonal changes, the physical changes, the intellectual understanding of ourselves and the, the, the people around us. So in the midst of it all, we, we, we struggle with trying trying to look at ourselves and go, hmm, do I really like myself? When I look at the other person, do I think I belong to this particular group? And that's what the teens constantly try to figure out at this point in time, whether I belong to my group of friends. So sometimes they feel inferior. Many of them feel inferior. Many of them, you know, are influenced by the media. You need to look a certain way. You need to sound a certain way. You need to behave a certain way. So sometimes it's just so much easier to hide behind something. So in the past where there's no mask, they hide behind the clothes. Mm. Now they have masks, it's easier. It's right on your face. You just hide behind your, your, your mask, right? And it's not just the face. There's also this trend where you need to have a tiny waist, wider hips, you know, uh, 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 a perfect, a perfect. Yes, the the hourglass figure, the hourglass figure that the Kardashians started and all that. All these teenage girls. I have a I have a friend who has a, a daughter. They don't they don't live here, but at the age of like the early teens, she was already aiming for that. Yeah. for that figure and you could see by the way she was dressing and 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 all that so it's oh, quite it's quite sad yeah. that they they're aiming for that but i feel like the younger generation right now right they're exposed to artists like ed sheeran and louis capaldi mm. and all that well, very real and, and yeah they're very real they're very real yeah but mm. on the flip side there are also the others that they but, they don't they don't they don't want to look like louis capaldi or yeah. ed sheeran they, but th- they, those are the boys those are the boys yeah. it's the girls you take a look Megan at the stallion you you take a look at some of these new filters out there that you have oh my goodness i saw one of a middle-aged lady and she came out looking Teenager. like she was n- t- 19. Yep. okay and yep. when when a kid uses that Oh, that's that's what I want to look like. Yeah. But the kid will laugh at this old person. No, but when they use the filter, that's what, what filter? I what I want to look like. That's the other one. I think oh, it's yeah. called bold glamour, where you don't need to wear anything, any, any makeup. makeup at all. Yeah. 
and it makes it look like you have a full face of makeup, enhanced lips and everything. And the filters are so good these days that when you put your hand across, you can't tell the difference between real and fake. Oh, wow. you know, so, so people, girls yeah. especially, can sit in front, do their unboxing, do their makeup, do their hair, looking like that. And that's why they want to wear their masks when they go out when in public, out. because that's not what they look like. Yeah. So it's 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 tough. It's really really hard. No, but I I wonder, Jerry, how how much of a role is missing from the parents here? Because as a teenager, I was very insecure. I was your seventy five pound weakling. Mm. You know, mm. uh, the bullied kid in school, that kind of thing. But it was my parents that carried me through it. Don't worry, mm. you're going to grow up. Things are going to change. You know, you don't look bad. You need to give yourself time. There was all this encouragement that came from the parents. Maybe today parents are working so hard they don't have the time to do that with their kids anymore. I don't Let's know. Let's be fair to the parents mm. because I I do think the parents do um, encourage them and tell okay, them Jerry, not to worry. Oh, oh. Just, just you know, we're here to support you. And I, th- I wonder if parents today, because and I'm not blaming parents, I think they work so hard and they have to work so hard to make ends meet these days. Maybe they don't have the time, Dr. Jerry? Well, yeah, well, I was going to say that, you know, let, let's be fair to the parents. Many of the parents do encourage their children. They do tell their children it will pass. You know, it's just a phase. Um, guess what the teens say? Mm. The teens say, it's because they're my parents. They have, they have to say that. They have to say oh, that. Wow. Oh, I see. So, so it's true. Yeah, the teens that are, you know, they, they, okay, self-esteem, and I explained before, uh, there are different levels of um, uh, uh, self-confidence, self-esteem. So let's just take three levels. Self-confidence is your uh, abilities, what abilities you have. Mm. Self-esteem is the trust that you have in your your abilities before you can even reach self-worth. So these three levels, how you value yourself right at the top there. So these children are still learning what do they have, what strengths do they have. So they cannot trust. So they can't trust themselves and they find it difficult to trust other people at this stage because Mm. they're not sure what they have and who um who they can uh kind of lean in they know their parents love them but in terms of their own outlook their own intellect you know they they want to be like their friends but their Mm. friends are as clueless as them you see Mm. yeah so they too then say oh but i can't trust I don't know how to trust my parents. They are just saying it just because. I think it's very hard for teenagers. I mean, it's already a very, very lonely world. And then they're going Mm. through all these things, you know, where where they they know they're going to come out on the better side. But Mm. through they still have to live through it. Yeah, and they will come out on the better side. They will. Uh, The thing is... It's it's that feeling that they have at that point, right? It's very hard. Because, Because for all of us, we... When we give uh, teenagers advice, it's because we've been in that situation before, mm, yeah. right? But for mm. them, it doesn't seem like it's going to pass. Exactly, see. no. And you know they, what I mean? And they, look at, and they look at us and they go, oh, you know, you don't, don't understand. You don't know what we're talking about. Even though they do know mm. in their minds that we have been through it, but maybe it was too long ago, times yeah. are different and stuff like exactly. that, you know? Uh, but it's it's a lonely, lonely time to be a teenager. It's yeah. always lonely. I wouldn't want to be a teenager again. No, 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 absolutely not. No. Okay. But, you know, I mean, if we do have a couple of teenagers listening to us, it will pass, yeah. you know, and, and, and it, it, it is going to be, I feel, the worst sort of physical and emotional time of your life in that it's sense. It's a tough time. Because, because you're getting to know yourself. You mm-hmm. don't know what you mm-hmm. love. You don't know what you like. You don't know what, what you're supposed to be, like Dr. Jerry says. So it's a, it's a <laughs> period of discovery, but I think it, it was so important what FD did, right? He shared a little bit about himself, about being mm. that, you know, underweight child, being that bullet child. And I find that when parents share about their stories and not just, you know, uh, I know what is best for you, I know what will come, mm. and not just mm. tell them that, 
but share your story these teens actually sit up and listen and go oh you mean you've gone through that too it means that i'm okay and that mm. usually helps them along a little bit because they know that my parents are human they have gone through whatever that is tough and they they have come out better and not because i know what's good for you because that's how parents tend to love to put all the instructions across or statements across in that manner right. perhaps they should show their ugliest teenage photo to their kids and say look <laughs> at what i look like this was me and look at me now oh i've had a, i got a couple of those yeah but but it's true oh. because you know, like because image of like glenn and myself and jc oh get, <laughs> You know, photos that make you cringe, you know, and go, oh my gosh, I look like that. <laughs> but, you know, um, for FD, I think it's because, you know, he wasn't a sporty uh, individual. Not really sporty, right? Mm, so Not until late secondary, yeah. And all he was interested in were girls. So that's usually the problem, you see? You know, all of us, we wanted all the girls, you know. We, we, we FD looks intre- confused. I, like, I don't know. But for me, I, all I, I cannot, could think of... I cannot tell this guy a secret, no? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. All, all I could think of was girls. Of course. Go to were, church, girls. You, you, you to school, had raging girls. hormones and you exactly. were a boy. Every and year. then I had like, you know, during that period, I had bad skin. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I was skinny also like FD. But then I started going to the gym and I had yeah. a sexy body. After that, really, really, really. <laughs> had been the I did build up... <laughs> that's true that's true no, the wife agrees yeah. as well yeah. <laughs> had had but she didn't even get to see the <laughs> sexy body quite frankly this was when I was like 14, 15 years old you know and then the body was was nice but the face oh, d- still looked like it was rolled over by a lorry oh mm. no you know it's like I, I still had bad skin so that that made me feel so down during mm. that time you see mm. I'm like Got this body. Should I just put a paper bag over my face? Or, <laughs> so or so my now head? you can imagine why the kids are wearing their masks. Yes, yes. The exactly. Same, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. the, it's the same, same it's the same reason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, you know, it's not only the looks but also the articulation mm. because they don't mm, they're still learning how to uh speak in a way that is um not that they are inarticulate, you know, but but they're not lacking in social graces or they, they need to put across certain ideas and they are still not very sure how to do that. Not everyone uh, matures at the same time. So behind the mask, they can go make their grunts and their, their nods or, you know, they don't have to speak or it gives them the delusion that they just be, can be quiet, mm. just make a couple of sounds and that situation will blow over. So even in sessions, sometimes I go like, oh, I, I actually cannot hear what you're saying. Mm. Can you speak louder? Because they are masked up, right? And I say, if you mumble like that, first of all, you mumble, I cannot hear. Mm. Second of all, I cannot even read your lips, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but that's how they cope with situations with where they feel a little bit awkward, they feel a little bit inadequate, they feel like they cannot express themselves. But there's also like a whole batch of like kids that lived through the two years of COVID, not mm. needing to articulate themselves, not needing to socialize. They could be the tweens, they could be the 14 mm. to 16, they could be the ones that were on the verge of being adults, uh, about to go to clubs, and then everything shut down. So they didn't have that whole exploration of going out and, and doing what we did as Which kids. Which is why there's research coming out of the UK with the biggest problem coming out of the pandemic was people being afraid to converse yeah because they had lost mm. the skill mm. Mm. yeah they'd mm. rather stay behind the screens yeah you yeah. know so the easiest way is to get them to take off their mask to mm. start talking mm. <laughs> but they're not yeah. they're not yeah because i mean mm. with the with the computer screen you have the option to switch the camera off so i suppose when they're yeah. in person their option is to keep the mask on, on. because that's mm. like you're turning your mm. camera off because once you take that off right. you reveal everything to them, it's mm. like being naked mm. almost, you know, in, in that sense of the word. Because mm. then you can mm. see what, you can see them pull their lips. You can see them, you can see them scowl if they take their masks off. You can see their real expressions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's the solution, Jerry? I mean, for, for these kids with self-esteem issues? 
Well, it does take some time, but all of us can do our part, right? I think when they take their mask off, so you and I mirror each other. So when you see someone and you're facing someone, the easiest thing is just to smile at them and not try and stare at them or try to like look at the, the pimple and their noses or, mm. or you know, hyper focus on something, which sometimes we inadvertently do, you mm. know, sometimes mm. we're tired, mm. sometimes we are in a bit of a judgy mood, we do that, but just being a bit more mindful right. um, that we are mirrors for the other person is very yeah. important. I think what we need to do is encourage them. So the moment we yeah. get to see their faces after they take off their masks, mm. we go like, wow, mm. you look like Britney Spears, <laughs> actually. Okay, <laughs> no, what, what I do, <laughs> no, what I do, I do, I do this with anyone I meet who takes off the mask and I go, that's so much better. Yeah. Yes. I always yes. go, that's so much yeah, better. You I don't, don't have to you. comment I on do. the look. You know, you don't have you to don't comment, have to comment on, the on the look. It's not about the look. No, it's not. It's about now, now I can see your face and then we can have a proper conversation, you know? I always mm, say that. Yeah. I, always I say can that. see your expression. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's not, yeah. But actually, uh, for you, Avdi, during the pandemic, right, you were wearing the surgical mask, right? Yeah. Actually, those masks are quite small for you, considering your oh, nose God, is so gosh, big. Oh, Glenn. <laughs> see, it's like, I'm sure that <laughs> see, Jay. there were gaps on top. <laughs> ga- I, I have a tip for the parents, you know. Uh, I have a tip for the parents. Um, in order to get to know your, your, your teens a little bit better, you know, teens love to use Spotify. Mm. Mm. And so one way that teens love to express is through their music. Go look at their Spotify list. It gives you a lot of clues as to what they and their friends are listening to. What are the lyrics? You know, so my, my two teens are as different as chalk and cheese. So the teen boy is into all the anime music. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. And then I go, oh no, what anyway is he watching? And my mind flees to all the big boobs and short skirts, right? Right. Um, but that's being a boy. <laughs> and then I have a teen girl who has a mix and she let me um, take a photo of her Spotify this morning. There's Twice, there's Adele, mm. there's Louis Capaldi, Capaldi, Capaldi. Um, and a few Capaldi <laughs> and a few others. Yeah, so that's Kiss Bay Two music it. right there. Yeah, it yeah. is actually. Yeah, yeah. we play we play all those artists. But that's what I've done with my kids as well. I've what I've done is I've shared one particular Spotify playlist that they can contribute to. So these are our favorite songs, the songs that make for me. It's the songs that calm me down. So if I'm in a bit of a mood or I need like an uplift or something, I've 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 titled it "Lift Me Up." So I've told them to contribute whatever songs they feel make them happy. It's very interesting that we're talking about this, Jerry, because one of my kids, when she went through her teenage years, her music was really dark. Mm. It was very dark. Mm. And what I did with with that was I started to listen to that same dark music and talk to her about what the music meant. meant. to her. Mm. Wow. I hope she wasn't listening to mm. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. <laughs> there are quite a few very much like that. Uh, but yeah, you know, so so... I, I found that helped bring her out. Mm. Yeah. I think I think talking about the music is uh, yeah. the meaning of is is yeah. a good is a good way. Yeah, but it's not one hundred percent accurate mm. now on Spotify. Mm. I mean, I'm I'm on Spotify Premium, right? Mm. And of course, I have daily uh, playlists. Yeah. that's uh, um, they send to you, you know made for me. Yeah, right, based on my yeah. listening pattern. You know, Doctor Jerry, we've been talking about teens and self esteem problems and how so many teens go through it. There are parents mm. now who have kids just shy. Of their teenage years. Tweens. Right? Mm. Tweens. And they're going, oh man, am I going to go through this? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) So what do they, what do the parents have to look out for? I mean, the... The teens try to assert themselves and, and create their own world, you know. Um, see if you can invite yourself into their world, you know, participate in some of it. It was very sweet. Uh, we were talking about uh, the the Spotify playlist. Mm. It was my girl that shared her Spotify playlist in the car. Mm. And then after played like three, four songs, no, four, five songs. And then we got out, we were on the way to dinner. And suddenly she had a revelation and go, oh, how come all my songs sound so sad? And then I burst out laughing. 
Mm. I was like, oh, okay, you, you, you realize what your songs sound like, you know, and that's an opening to talk to your team about the topics. Are you going through something? Is, is school tough for you? Which part is tough? And to share that, you see. Yeah, I so love that. different ways that I you think- can share. I think a Spotify playlist is a way to connect. I think what they're watching also perhaps could be a way mm-hmm. to connect as well. Things like Netflix and maybe yes. YouTube videos and what yes. who they're following on Instagram and, and TikTok mm-hmm. would be True. a good way to kind of connect and mm-hmm. find out mm-hmm. what they like about those platforms and mm-hmm. the content. Mm-hmm. Mm. And before we stop them from wearing a certain top or a certain outfit, let's remember that we went through that <laughs> phase also. <laughs> I don't know about other people, but I know I went through some phase. I did as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but not so much, you know, I mean, because I used to observe all the girls, Yeah. right? And of course, I mean, if a girl wears a pair of shorts and all that, you know, us guys, we notice as well. Yeah, of course. I just want to say that these days, right, the girls wear really tiny shorts. Oh, they do, and crop I, tops. I would never allow yeah. my daughter to wear the kind of shorts that that some of these girls yeah. wear these days. They're very, very well, short. They're ridiculously but, short. And you know, some of these girls, what they do is they change once they leave. So it's not mm. like the you parents are allowing it's them to leave like that. It's almost inappropriate. Yeah, but no, you don't yes. know. There are, there are a lot of uh, yeah. very, very short shorts and yeah. skirts like, out why, there Why now, aren't the yeah. police doing something about this? <laughs> the fashion police. Yes, yeah, let's go <laughs> <call laughs> <them. laughs> police. As in our police. <laughs> they can't. Uh, it's speaking, like indecent exposure. Wait, wait, speaking of which, before, before we wrap up with Dr. Jerry, speaking of the police, I was at the airport the other day coming back from Vietnam and I saw a robot police. And I'm trying to yeah. think to myself, what are these robot poli- What do they do? Uh, that's why, like, you okay. see, because you see, of the... Those are those police that need to go after these little skirts. Then no one can blame them for looking up their skirts as well. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, robot Yikes. police. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Is it a conversation girl? I yeah, shall sure. end it with a little... <laughs> uh, perception is about perception. Okay. Um, hate has four letters, but so does love. Enemies has seven letters, but so does friends. Lying has five letters, but so does truth. Hurt has four letters, but so does heal. Cry has three letters, but so does joy. Negativity has ten letters, but so does positivity. Life is two-sided. Perception begins with us. Oh, I like Very that. Nice, Very nice, Jerry. Very, very nice. nice. Very, very nice. Very nice. Thank you for that, Jerry. Everybody, a lovely week ahead, and I'll see you all next week. All right. Thanks, I, I still can't go and see you, huh? No. No, no Glenn. <laughs> no. no. Okay. Just trying. Uh, okay. Thank you, Jerry. Bye. 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 See you next week.